This video is going to go over how to create halftones and halftone effects in Photoshop. If you're looking to do this for screen printing, the first thing I'm going to recommend is that you talk to whoever's printing the actual thing you're trying to produce because they'll oftentimes have certain settings that they want you to use or they'll want to do it themselves so they can have total control over what's going on. But I'm just going to jump in here and kind of show you the basics. So once you have an image that you want to use, and the higher quality of the image the better, but halftones tend to be pretty forgiving so don't worry about that a whole bunch. You want to go to image and then mode at the very top here and you have to convert it to grayscale before you convert it to a bitmap so we're going to convert this to grayscale and as you can see it converted to just black and white sometimes you can go into levels and to do that you hit control L or command L on a Mac and let's say you didn't want this really light section here to be halftone dots because the halftones are just looking for the gradation from black to white and the more black it is the more dots there'll be in that area or the thicker the lines if you're doing a diagonal line. So we can kind of tweak this a little bit if we want to to make it look a little bit closer to what you might be trying to aim for. The arrows here, this middle one, is overall contrast. So the more left you drag it, the lighter it gets, and the more right you drag it, the darker it gets. So I'm gonna make this a little bit darker here. And then the far right arrow here is for highlights. So if you drag that to the left, it removes a lot of this stuff down here. I'm not going to worry about that a whole bunch though because this stuff doesn't really bother me. I'll just tweak it a little bit. But when you're outputting these, if they don't look quite like what you want, hit Control L or Command L on a Mac to go to levels and just kind of play around with it a bit until you get the overall image looking closer to what you want. I'm going to hit OK there and now we're going to go back up to image and once again to mode and then we're going to select bitmap. Here it's going to ask you what resolution you want. Right now this image is at 240 pixels an inch. I'm just going to leave that. But you can actually scale up your images using this. Like let's say you want to double this thing size so we can make it 480 if we were trying to do something like that. Bitmap is an interesting way to enlarge images. And like let's say the biggest image you could find is half the size of what you needed. You can very easily double it just by doubling the resolution and then dragging your final image into that smaller resolution space which will effectively double it up. Under method, we're gonna select halftone screen, hit okay. And now there's a few different settings that we can kind of think about here. Frequency, basically the smaller the number of frequency, the bigger the, either the dots or the lines are gonna be. Under shape here, it's set to line right now, but I'm gonna hit round. And most people will tend to use either round or line. There's a few different settings you can play around with. I'm just gonna show round and line since they're by far the most common to be used. I'm gonna select round. Angle doesn't make a lot of difference on round, but it does make a difference on line. It'll be the actual angle that the lines are coming in at. So I'm gonna leave it 45. But this is definitely a setting, both frequency and angle, that a screen printer would probably have a very specific number so that when you print the dots, they go well with the screen they're using. They don't create a moiré pattern, which looks bad. So always ask if you're actually gonna output bitmaps from an image or whatever to a screen printer. But since I'm just focusing on how this looks, I'm going to make the frequency something kind of small, like let's just do 15, so it has a very bold halftone look. I'm going to hit OK. Actually, this is a little bit smaller dots than I thought, but as you can see, it's turned out pretty well. The area that I brightened right here, you can tell, doesn't have very many dots left in it. Pretty neat stylized look. I'm actually just going to hit back here and go to Image Mode Bitmap again. I'm just going to OK. And then I'm going to set it to 10 lines an inch so we can see what it looks like with even bigger dots. So here it's even more of a stylized look. It definitely looks pretty cool and can add an interesting flavor to whatever you're working on. I'm going to hit back once again here and I'm going to select Image Mode Bitmap. I'm going to hit OK. It's set to half tone screen. But this time I'm going to do, instead of round, I'm going to do line. And that's where your angle is really going to matter. So I'm going to leave this at 45. So these are going at a 45 degree angle. And let's just try 10 lines an inch and see if it looks okay. Actually turned out pretty cool. So as you can see, this is really, really fast and easy to do. And once you're ready to actually use this, like let's say you want to overlay this over a design, something like that, but you don't want the white background still, there's an easy way to do that. And you can go to channels right here next to your layer palette. And if you don't see channels, you can go up to window and then kind of right at the top here, there's channels. Just make sure you select that and it should bring it up. There's only one channel since it's bitmap. So I'm gonna hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and then click it. And that'll select basically all the black here. And now under image mode, we're gonna go back to grayscale. We can't skip right to RGB or CMYK. We gotta go to grayscale first. And it's gonna say size ratio, just leave it at one. 
and now I'm going to go back to image mode and then this time RGB select that and here you can see all the red green and blue channels are back under layers I'm just gonna hit create a new layer right here and I'm gonna turn off this background layer so we can actually see what we're pasting in and when we selected off the bitmap channel there it actually ended up selecting all the white it always does that first so we're gonna wanna with the marquee tool selected right here rectangular marquee tool I'm gonna right click or control click if you're using a Wacom tablet and select inverse and then I'm gonna hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac and then backspace and that'll just fill in whatever our foreground color is right here so as you can see now here's our eye on its own layer that's really easy to edit and now with the new color selected that's a little bit lighter right here I'm just gonna create another new layer underneath the eyeball and I'm gonna hold alt and then hit backspace to fill it in and there you have it and you can of course go to this layer with the eye on it and hit control U or command U to bring up hue saturation you can play around with different colors until you get it looking just the way you want but it's pretty cool and it's a super interesting effect so have a bit of fun with it play around with different settings until you get it looking the way you want and then when you're ready to go it should be as easy as dragging and dropping into your workspace hope this video was helpful to you and if it was please like and favorite and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe i do my best to keep new content coming every week thanks for watching Thank you.